Okay, popular question I keep getting. Porting the LT4 supercharger, is it worth it? Good morning. Um, you know, that's, that's a loaded question because it really depends on the situation. Um, this specific question came up. I already have a 125 kit. Uh, is it worth it for me to have my bore ported? We haven't done any real back-to-back -back testing, but knowing what I know about the LT4 blower, um, I'm kind of of the opinion that it's already maxed out. Could porting help it? Possibly. Um, but I think that if you do run more air through it, you're overwhelming the... Um, the intercooler bricks. So, if you if we're already overwhelming the intercooler bricks, um, is there anything to really be had? Um, in my opinion, I don't think we should spend any money on the stock blower. It's just it's the smallest production blower to hit the market in in many many years. Um, you know when the Corvette came out with the first supercharged Corvette came out, it came out with a 2300 on it. The CTSV and Z01 came out with a 1900 on it. And then the C7s came out with a 1.7 on it. So, you know, they're chasing, they're chasing emissions. They're chasing super efficient, you know, clean emission uh, performance, which is admirable. Okay, but that put there's a lot of restrictions put on that combination. Well, that, uh, he might, he might, uh, you know, when you're spinning the blower really fast, you get a lot of response out of it, but it it leaves the top end flat. Um, getting back to the question, should I put my blower? Well, you know, it's six. It's I think if you do the work yourself and you ship it out, ship it back, and you know, probably buy a shipping container for it, and you're probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about $1,600. What are you going to get for $1,600? Well, if you're not spinning the blower any faster, I wouldn't expect to see much. I don't know. I don't claim to know um, because I haven't actually done the testing, and I won't state anything unless I've done the testing myself. Um, you know, I have seen videos where people have done back-to-back -back testing when they're already spinning the blower at obscene blower RPMs, you know, big pulley on the bottom, small pulley on the top. Um, there's definitely some gains to be had in the porting. But at the stock pulley ratios, I wouldn't expect a whole lot. I think we've addressed all of the restrictions in the LT4 with our 125 package by doing the rotofab air intake, the 95 millimeter throttle body, the long tube headers, the high flow cats, the three inch exhaust pipe all the way back to the stock muffler. Um, I don't really believe that there's going to be a lot more there. And if you're running on E85, this is the other side of it, we're, we still have fuel system limitations. You know, we, as it is with the 125 package on E60, you're, max, you're really, really close to maxing out the fuel system. So do we spend $1,600 to get more airflow and we don't have the fuel to support it? Again, it doesn't make any sense. So my recommendation going from the 125 package is blower cam combo next because the cam's going to give us another 100 horsepower of headroom. It's going to give us the airflow required to make a lot more power. Um, and so you're going to jump from that 660, 670 rear wheel horsepower range on E60. You can go up to 840, 850 rear wheel horsepower on gasoline. You can't run E85 anymore because again, we're fuel system limited. Right. But, you know, we, ha we have to take everything into account. You know, if you had an unlimited fuel system, then you can, you can do a lot more. You know, but I mean, at the end of the day, what are you really gonna do with 830 or 850 rear wheel horsepower on the street? Uh, the tires and the road can't hold it, you know. Um, we're we're seeing 800 rear wheel horsepower <laughs> is becoming the new norm, you know. Uh, 17 years ago, when I first got my chassis dynamometer, if you had 450 wheel horsepower, you were the man. 
and now, you know, 800 is, is becoming the new normal. And, and I'm driving these cars, I road test them, and first, second, and third gear is almost useless in a lot of the cars, even in, even in fourth gear at, at 70 miles an hour can spin the tires. And you could lose control of the car if, you, if you're not on your game driving. So there comes a point when when is enough enough, you know, or when is enough too much. Right. You know, we all want to have the big numbers. We all want to brag about them. But the reality is um, we're, we're not going to be able to use that much power unless you're in a closed course, special tires, special track prep, you know, and then you can start putting down those kind of numbers, you know. Um, if you're just spinning the tires and... You know, I always said spinning ain't winning. Right. So, <laughs> uh, you know, getting back to the original question, in my opinion, I wouldn't spend any money on porting a little blower. I would just sell it to somebody else, you know, with an LT1. That's a great upgrade for somebody with an LT1. Put a bigger blower, put a cam in it, and, and, and have more power than you know what to do with. So... That's that's kind of my take on the whole thing. I could be totally wrong. Never claim to know everything. Um, I'm, I, we learn every day through all of the stringent testing that we do, all the different builds that we do, um, and you know everybody's going to have a different opinion, and that's okay. Opinions, you know, differences of opinions uh, spark conversation, and, and I'm always willing to have that conversation you know, like a gentleman and not just say, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, because that's not, that's not how things work. We, we need to have, we need to have debates over what's right and what's wrong and we can all come together and, and, and learn something from it, you know, so um, I really do appreciate the feedback that we get, um, you know, good or bad. I mean, I had, it's funny this morning, I got a, someone on the video um, of the the great spark plug debate that we did guy goes bullshit closing the gaps better i says okay instead of you know being a being a tool and calling them out saying you don't know what you're talking about i said okay please share your side of the uh your explanation for that let's let's talk about it you know let's spark a conversation i'm not going to shoot the guy down and tell him he don't know what he's talking about whether he does or not but let's hear your you know your theory Show me the difference. Show me why you believe that. Yeah. Is it because you read it on the internet, or because you've done stringent testing to prove me wrong? Right. Okay. And if you if you have that testing data, if you have that information, please share it with us. We can all learn something from it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're gonna call bullshit? Then bring it out. Bring yeah. your facts to the table. Let's do it. You know. So um, with that said. Thanks for following along. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll try to do more of these videos. They're not, we don't always have the time to do it. You know, we're coming into Christmas time next week, so it's it's slowing down a little bit. And I had a few minutes to talk about this, so I figured we'd do a video. But uh, thanks, guys.